Welcome to the Contractor Success Forum. Today we are talking about emergency triage checklists when your job is bleeding profits. Because here on the Contractor Success Forum, we discuss how to run a more profitable, successful construction business, or today, how to run it when you're not profitable, when you have a big loss. And it's amazing that Stephen Brown from McDaniel Whitley Bonding and Insurance Agency has got a triage checklist for you today. If you're having some losses there, but we'll talk about that. And we also have Wade Carpenter with Carpenter and Company CPAs. And I'm Rob Williams with Iron Gate Entrepreneurial Support Systems, throwing in and also author of The Pumpkin Plan for Contractors. So uh, there, it is. there it is. There it is. So what is this and why are we talking about a triage checklist? Steven, do you have clients that lose money on jobs? Get behind? It has happened before, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully you never lose money on a job. That's what I prefer. But say you got a job and you call an ambulance on it. You're carrying that job on a gurney into the emergency room. That job is bleeding profits. It's hemorrhaging, guys. This is a big deal. So, bleeding, hemorrhaging. Yeah. So what do you do? What do you do as a contractor to stop it from getting worse? How do you turn it around and check that job back out of the hospital and put it back into society, a healthy and happy project? What do you do? That's the question. What do you do? The guts and gore. Yeah. Yeah. It's gory. It's bloody. It's nasty. Nobody wants to deal with it. Nobody wants to think about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. But guys, especially on commercial projects that have a lot of moving parts to it, you never know when that job is losing money. So first of all, how do you keep it from happening? Listen to the contractor success form, have your systems in place. So you are warned ahead of time, at least from the financial records that a job's losing money. And of course, the second thing is an I've seen this in a lot of claims. Unfortunately, since I'm a surety bond agent, we have bond claims and we have a bond claim. It's the worst possible scenario because it means a job is losing or has lost money. And the question is, are you going to lose your shirt over it? Is it that bad that the bonding company has been called in? That's a job that's right in line to sink your ship. So what do you do? Yeah. Can you do anything? And most of the time when I've had losses, it's, just suck it up and keep working every day. And I guess that's assuming you have a balance sheet that can finish the job. You may not be able to finish the job. Well, that's just it. You don't talk about it, fire a bunch of people. Well, I think one of our points today, just throwing this out there, like generally accepted accounting principle says, if you're on percentage of completion and you got a lost job, you're supposed to recognize it immediately for financial statement purposes. Now tax purposes, it doesn't mean you're supposed to, you're not allowed to do that. But the reason I bring this up is this kind of conservative approach is the fact that they're recognizing it financial statements, but you should be recognizing it's happening to you and paying attention what to do about it. That's when you should be hyper aware and really paying attention to these things Stephen's going to go over today. Yeah. And guys, we're going to post this triage checklist on our website. If you'd like to get a copy of it and also along with that checklist is a post-mortem things to think about after you got the job finished. And the website is contractorsuccessforum.com. Well, I mean, all our listeners know that. Everybody. Know we may have some new guys that just Googled us for this amazing <laughs> triage right. checklist. So okay. they got to know. They got to know. Right. <laughs> okay. So, you know, what happens? You find out you're losing money on a job and it's not going in the direction you want. The first question that's going to pop into your mind is, did we miss a major line item in our original bid? That's the first thing. What did we miss? The problem is you want to do the postmortem first and you obsess about that. But what you really have to do is the triage work. You got to stop the bleeding. So the first thing to do is get a copy of your contract with any change orders in front of you. You got to have that. You've got to have it in front of you. You got to review it and you've got to determine when the project starts according to the contract and when it's finished. 
That's very simple, but you got to have that. And then the next thing you got to do is you have to determine based on the current situation, when the job's going to be completed, when you think it's going to be finished and when in a worst case scenario, it may be completed. And you've got to get from the contract what liquidated damages are in there. On commercial contracts, you've got liquidated damages. And if it's a, a private multi-use project, they're usually huge liquidated damages because there's all these other players involved with the project being done by a certain time frame. And they manage that through liquidated damages. So you have to know what that is. That could get ugly. That always got me really scary. I hated those contract provisions like in the number if you're one day late it's ten thousand dollars i had one client with that line item that just scared the heck out of me well it should <laughs> yeah well, per day per if day it, ten thousand three hundred dollars a day and it goes over 60 days that may not bankrupt you but ten thousand dollars a day could eat your lunch oh yeah that was very scary i did very few jobs for him he was a good friend, but I was like, whoa, I don't know if I'm going to bid your jobs or not. <laughs> well, don't think the owner isn't going to access it. Don't assume that they're going to look the other way on that. So what percent of the job is complete? How do you think you figure that out, Wade? Well, obviously it's like percentage of the cost you've done to date to divided by the total estimated cost. But, you know, just to get where you're going here, I believe this is the time you need to be really hyper aware of your job costs, knowing where you are. A lot of times contractors don't have very good job information, or if they do, they're getting not getting it timely. On a job like this, this is the time you really got to make sure all those costs get in as soon as possible so you can finish the job as soon as possible. If you got these late completion clauses and penalties, okay. that's the time yeah. you need to really focus on that. All right. And is the job overbuilt or underbuilt? Why does that matter? Yeah. That's a really good point. Way would most of my jobs when I was way over or under, I really didn't panic in the beginning because my first inclination is, okay, somebody's got something in the computer wrong. Something's just messed up on the data entry or they got the quantity or they shipped a truckload to a wrong job or something happened. Funny, so I didn't panic in the beginning. It's like, okay, let's sort all this out. But then that does cause a delay. I guess it depends on the accuracy of your systems and your confidence, which I guess that meant I was confident in our overall system, but our day to day, as we went, when I saw a big error, I mildly panicked, but usually nine out of 10 times, it was just a key punch problem. But getting that sorted out was, I guess our first problem was going to our spreadsheets and whatever else we were using to get some of the detail. <laughs> I think where Stephen was going with that over and under billing is, are you way out in front of the billing and you spent all your cash and you're still bleeding? That's when the bonding company is going to get nervous. And I guess Stephen can talk about this, but if you're under billed, you probably need to be billing as fast as you can. Make sure you get that cash flowing and go ahead and do what you need to do to get the job done. Is that where you're going with it? That's exactly right. And the question is, is who should I tell about this? Well, the first person is your accountant and then your attorney and then your bond agent. What advice do they have? As a bonding agent, I can tell you that the first thing they're going to look at is get us a current whip. Show us how all the other projects look right now. Show us exactly how much cost you have to date and your estimated cost to complete and the estimated completion date. Lay all the facts out. And then I think you'd be amazed at the good advice you get. You might say, well, that's dumb. Why would I tell my bonding company I'm losing money on a job? Well, you can wait until the fiscal year and comes out and let them find out then. And then, you know, the standard answer is why did that job lose money is, at least this is what we used to joke about telling our contractors to say is, oh, it was weather related. Yeah. No, unless, you, unless you get unless you get a farmer's <laughs> almanac out, you know. Wade you know, did it. Hard to dispute. <laughs> yeah, Wade. I don't know why Wade, Wade, Wade did it. Like you know, yeah. he's posting something. I <laughs> Wade. But the point is you get a current whip together and you know the answers for you talk to your bonding agent. And at one time, if all the other jobs are doing good and this one job is losing money, there's nothing more powerful than having a quick sit down with your underwriter and your agent or 
do it online as to here we are right now. Just want to make you aware of it. That's what we're doing about it. There's nothing that builds faith better than that. Remember the the Bonnie company wants to be your team. They do not want you to go out of business. So open that up. Second thing is the lawyer. Lawyer might tell you, well, there's some force majeure language, price escalation things. So carefully document what your costs were and the problems you had obtaining it at the price you originally bid. Take that to the owner for an argument. They may not reimburse you. They might say, well, I'll tell you what, we'll give you some relief on the liquidated damages. But either way, it's a help. And what are your rights? See, when you're losing money, your fault, my fault, nobody's fault. It could be you. It could be your subcontractors. It could be the other folks on the job that you have no control of that are slowing you down. And in that situation, you got to go back to the contract and at that time and force in writing with the owner, architect, engineer, this is the problem we're having. You've got to document it at the time it happened. Or if it ever goes to arbitration or lawsuit, you have zero chance of getting your money back. So that's one thing. But the next most important thing to do, and we're talking about triage guys, is that old Navy expression, all hands on deck. Your ship's getting attacked and you blow that, oh, go, and then everybody runs out on deck and starts (laughs) firing. Well, all hands on deck means put your best hands on deck. So that's going to cost you money. You're going to spend more time. Your best hands are going to spend on time. But this is a situation where you have all hands on deck and you make sure they have everything they need to finish the job. So if you're documenting the things that are not your fault, if you're having copies of all your change orders properly executed, if you're abiding by the contract and you finish the job, Then you've got some legal repercussion on the liquidated damages and getting reimbursed for other things. So it's an option. It depends on how you bid the job. Was it cost plus? Was it a a certain percent profit with a estimated cost, a maximum cost not to exceed? I've seen all kinds of contracts like that. So get your contract out, all hands on deck. You brought up a good point there. If you're up to date on your costs and stuff like that, you get your whip up to date. You can see what you got left to do. And sometimes, as you said, sometimes it's, it's a change order it can turn things back around. But the other thing is, hey, you got to look at the remaining items is, hey, where can we cut costs? Where can we cut time to get this thing done? Minimizing the bleeding is where I was going with it. Right. We did a podcast on WIP, Work in Progress Reports. It's everything. It's everything to increasing your bonding. It's everything toward projecting cash flow. And it's everything to communicating what happens when a job is losing money and what you're going to do about that cash flow to make up for that job losing cash. Cash comes out of your cash reserves to pay that loss. It comes out of future profits to pay that loss. Right, guys? Okay, speaking of cash, this is the most important. Well, it's not the most important. All right, they're all important. This is triage, guys. We're trying to bring this project back to life, but it's hugely important. Pay your materials and suppliers on time. When you're losing money on a job and you have the materials and the suppliers worried that they're not going to get paid, then they start gossiping. And when they start gossiping, that affects other jobs. And when it affects other jobs and this job, I've seen chain reactions help happen where the contractor did not have the cash and stopped paying the materials and suppliers on time. So you may have a situation where you got to make a hard decision on what's most important. I've seen it happen more than once so that's why we put it on the list yeah i was recently talking to somebody about that that was unsure of their future cash flow projections and just wasn't sure if they were going to have enough for this and that and i've been in the same position before not sure if i should pay this bill today because what's coming up in the next week or two and i'm not really sure where i stand with all that when you get into these cash crunches And so sometimes you don't do anything like you just say you don't pay the vendors because you're just not sure. So you may not have a CFO on board. You may not have that projection 
done yet because we're not talking about a, a normal cash flow report. We're talking about a detailed day to day. I can remember at times where every day I had them, it was like 2009, you know, when it got really bad every day, there was a cash flow projection spreadsheet put on my desk. These are the ones that we're going to do. It was ugly, you know, so having that to make a real big decision, but when you don't have a plan, sometimes you just stop doing everything. You don't pay anybody. And then you just say, well, I'll deal with it tomorrow. And then a week goes by or 10 days go by and then you hadn't paid anything. And then it really starts getting ugly. You think you just wait for a couple of weeks and then you're going to figure them out rather than doing that proactively. Wait, I don't know what you see happening because you're the guys that, that I would usually have figuring this out for me. Yeah. To that point, you know, what Stephen was saying, keep the material suppliers paid, the subs paid because Number one, I've seen them walk off the job or not deliver materials because they're afraid they're not going to get paid or COD. And that can make the bleeding worse if you're going to extend it out because you can't get it done because the people won't show back up. That's exactly right, Wade. And, you know, I would say after reviewing the contract and getting an idea of where you stand on the project, getting an accountant to help you. It should be all hands on deck to get the whip put together, the current balance sheet, income statement, and whip. And here's why, because your first reaction is max out your bank line, get as much cash out of as you can and sit there and use it for paying everyone. That's something that if you don't have the cash in your financial statement, it's why bonding companies want you to have a bank line of credit. But then again, if you have a whip, you know whether you have some backlog gross profit coming in to pay that off. It's a worst case scenario. So say you don't have a bank line of credit. Say you're losing your shirt and say you don't have any cash. What do you do? Still talk to your bond agent about it because there are things that you need to do. And you need to understand what the repercussions of what you do and you don't do, how it may affect your company or your ability to be a contractor in the future. So then after you get everything going, and you're on top of it and you complete the job, but then just find a bag. That's the next thing on the list. Paper bag to breathe into. <laughs> just slowly, just calm down. It's going to be okay. You know, information is power. And then that's when, after this is all over, you know, you do the postmortem stuff. Exactly what happened. You have to study it and then you have to communicate it to your project managers and key employees. And guys, also, a lot of folks just don't spend enough time with their project managers or on the job site. And project managers, like anyone else, like you, me, anyone else, there may be some huge personal issues going on in their lives that you're not aware of that affect their ability to manage that project. So you need to know what's going on and know when they might need help or exactly what buttons you need to push to get them focused. Yeah, that's where I was going to go with it is sometimes the PMs need to have somebody to say, hey, this is really important that we go ahead and take care of this and put as much focus on it as we can. I wanted to, as an after effect before we finish this thing up, unless you'll have some other questions, is it's very interesting that bonding company claims adjusters, they come in when they have to finish the job. You can't finish it and they have to finish it. The one thing that they're most preoccupied of beside getting some accurate data, how much of the work on the project is good? Has anybody that's called back in to finish a bonded job that hadn't been complete, any new contractor wants to demo everything and start from scratch? Because, you know, I got to warranty it. I'm not going to warranty their work. So you want to see how much of the work is good. Is the job close to being punched out? Where do we stand? But the most importantly is they want to know how technical was the job and how savvy is the owner and architect engineer? Are they smart? Are they idiots? Are they jerks? That's the most important thing the bonding companies worry about. Uh, sometimes you hit a perfect storm of a bad job, an architect and engineer that helped make the job lose money, without a doubt, and an owner who's uh, ripping off the contractor in every way they can contractually. And uh, believe me, I've seen that too. Okay, well, hey, not to be on a downer, we don't want this to happen to you, but what do you do if it happens? What triage? Get that job checked out of the hospital. Wheel them out the hospital. Put them in your truck. Take them home. 
<laughs> and move on. Learn from it. Learn yep. from it because you're going to lose money on some jobs. I hope yeah. it's not you, listener. Yeah. So, so don't else. freeze. Like I said, a lot of times I see people just freeze. So get this checklist out and that gives you a good start to something that you can be doing. Doing nothing is not the answer. That's what we see happening a lot. You just go into shock and fear and got to do something, got to work on it. And this is a good place to start having a list. Yeah, I agree. Hey, talk to your professionals, talk to your team. All right. Trust the advice you get from them. That's all. Yep. Get that team together. All right. Well, this is great. So uh, Wade, I yeah, appreciate that. And I guess you've seen some guys going through this and I guess Steven too. And I've Yeah, like, absolutely. I guess before we go, I was hoping Stephen would do that Navy horn again thing. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good way to end the show today on the Contractor Success Forum. So, hey, maybe out. that's when a submarine's dive. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I yeah that's right. That did kind of sound like I a wish submarine. I had been, I... Yeah. So, yeah, go to contractorsuccessforum.com to download this or however our people have put these links in, wherever you're watching us, watch us on YouTube, watch us on your podcasts or listen to us. So we appreciate you tuning in and listen to our next show. Thanks at the Contractor Success Forum. We're rooting for you. All right. Ooh.